So we are heading over to exciting house number four on Talbot Street. Old South Side is probably the most transitional of the neighborhoods we currently are working in. We've sold three houses so far on this block, and this is the worst one left, so tackling this is huge. The house kind of looks like a haunted house. It's a single story home with pretty basic layout. It's got a living room, kitchen, two bedrooms, and a bathroom. We got it for a really good price. It was 20,000. We bought it less than a year ago, but that's not a thing now. You can't right, buy a house right. on Talbot for 20,000. The first one we sold on Talbot is a three bedroom, two bath, and it sold for 231. Okay. And we sold that house over a year ago. So if we can take this house from a two bed, one bath to a three bed, two bath, I think we might be able to do even better since the prices in the neighborhood have gone up since then. But I want to budget safely right. and hopefully just do really well. Good job. job. So entry, living room. So musty. Yeah, it doesn't smell good. Yeah, this all's gotta go. I love these double doors. Yeah, I don't think we can reuse them specifically for what they are. That's okay. These are coming home with me. Right now, we've got something reminiscent of two bedrooms. This whole front space, I think, makes sense that we're, we open all this up to be kitchen, living, dining room, put a couple bedrooms on the back. Yeah. Bedroom has a nice size closet. Well, it's not gonna stay. We got a nice like 30 degree slant on this kitchen. The corner over here is very oh, squishy. Yeah. All the floor is squishy. Backing away to safety. It's completely rotted. Ideally, we're gonna just take the back off with heavy machinery. Yeah. This okay. whole front part, open up, kitchen, dining, living. Yeah. And then back, just kaput, because this is poop. This is all coming off. Yep. All right, let's go outside. Ooh, it's rather precarious. Whoa. Voila. So we have a good, nice size yard, and the garage looks great. It's gonna be a good selling point. We don't get garages terribly often. Yeah. I mean, I know we know the foundation's bad, but this is just like, someone set these bricks back in place and then painted them in place. Bricks are not supposed to move like that if they're properly supporting a house. Oh my God. There should be mortar. You can just poke them with your finger and poke them out. This has no foundation at all. There's concrete floating in the air. Most of the back of the house is coming off, so we'll have new block foundation. Uh, but the front is going to need significant work and resupport to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. We're gonna have at least 15 to 20,000 in foundation costs. As long as there's not even more things that we haven't already found, so. There's definitely more things that we haven't found. This one is what mom calls a chop and pop. We're gonna chop off the back portion of the house where the floor and the foundation are in the worst shape, and we'll pop on a two-story addition in the back that will include our three bedrooms and two bathrooms. On the front of the house, we need to fix the existing foundation and open up the front three rooms to create an open floor plan for our kitchen, living room, and dining room. Everybody out of the addition? We're clear? All right, hit it. Oh my! Oh, it wants to go. It wants to go. Yeah! You're like a little tornado. Everyone on our team calls Mina Little T because she's a little tornado. I move quickly, and I demolish anything that's in my way. It's gone! What happened? It just fell over? It fell over. Pretty ridiculous, right? When did you find that out? We talked to the gal next door, and she said the last her cameras could see it, it was like 1 a.m., and it was up. And then the next morning, Tad drove by at like, eight or nine and it was down. Oh my goodness. Crazy, right? I never would have expected a house falling down. I wouldn't have expected that. We've had a situation before where a house looked like it was gonna fall. So we wrapped it with a chain and we anchored it and it didn't fall. Which means we're gonna have to amend our plans. Yeah. So this is our fourth house on this block of Talbot and was hopefully the one we were gonna be able to 
make a little bit of money on now that some comps have been established. And depending how this shakes out, that may be not an option anymore. I don't know. This is so sad. Yeah. I feel like we should have a little ceremony. A, a moment a little, for it. A little vigil or something. Although the house will be smaller now, we designed the front elevation with the three big windows that were in the original cottage, keeping the front porch and door just to the left of it. And we kept the open layout when you first walk into the living room, dining room, and kitchen area. The big change is that now we have space for only one bedroom and bathroom instead of two bedrooms on the first floor. The important part was we had to shrink our footprint, so we met our new easements and our green space, which meant putting a bedroom upstairs, so we still have the three bedrooms, because we're pouring a brand new foundation, it'll be strong enough to support a full second story. And that means that now, when you come up the stairs, the main bedroom and bathroom are to the left, and that third bedroom we didn't have room for downstairs moves up to the second story to the right of the stairs. So obviously the house falling down costs a certain amount of money to, you know, we hadn't planned on a foundation and all this stuff. Um, and shrinking the house makes it sell for a little bit less, but it also lowers our cost to build it because it's pretty much a price per square foot build cost. So we're gonna shave a little bit off that too. So no extra cost to two chicks? No. Nice. We're finally picking up speed at our Talbot house. After we made the changes to add the third bathroom and move the water heater downstairs, we quickly moved on to siding install. And on the inside, drywall is finishing up and we're priming the walls. Today we are on Talbot Street at our previously collapsed home that has now been rebuilt better, stronger than ever. Flooring down, we're making progress in the rest of the house, turning our little cottage into a minimalist modern farmhouse to appeal to our potential buyer, Jared and his girlfriend, Jordan. Inside, the white shaker cabinets have been installed and they're gonna look great with the white subway tile backsplash we chose. In the main bath, our mosaic marble tile surround is in, which ties in our minimalist color scheme. And outside, the house is getting a fresh coat of paint that'll give it that modern farmhouse vibe we want. Oh my gosh. I love this. This is beautiful. Look at the backsplash too. Absolutely beautiful. I love the backsplash. And the high up all the way yeah, to the, the ceiling cabinet. Cabinet. To the ceiling. Oh my goodness. This is I so cool. This. So before it was just three rooms that were all separated. Wow. So even though it fell down, we still kind of kept the front edge looking the same, so it fit in in the area. So it's still got a little bit of, of that charm to it. Love the openness of it. This is oh my awesome. Goodness. Perfect for Love entertaining. Mm -hmm. Everybody's all in the yes. space. We'll go around this way and get a closer look at the kitchen. Yeah. This I is love white. Beautiful. I love the I knobs. Know. I love the color of the knobs. We wanted to do the copper again to bring in some more because mm -hmm. it is a lot of yeah. white. You got the quartz countertop that's white, all the cabinets. So the copper just kind of warms it up a little yes. bit. I love this like nook area. Well, those are the core bowls that were on the front of the house. Yes, that's I all. love that. that. Awesome. But that's a little bit of the detail under the stairs, which really isn't necessary to expose, but I think it gives it a little bit more character mm -hmm. and feels not like a new construction home. Yes, I love this. Plenty of space and storage. And when you're working in the kitchen, you're still part of the party. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's go check out your huge living room. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I love the amount of light. We go a little crazy on our can lights. And the rectangular windows, I love. 
We kept the, the front windows, uh, well, new ones, but mm -hmm. then we wanted to add these high skinny ones so you do get some more light from the north and south, mm -hmm. but you still have some privacy. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, the natural light in here is going to be really nice. Love This it. is going to be wonderful to host people. Open it. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Come on oh, I in. I love the barn door. I know. The that's barn door so is so cool. cute. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> So we have a queen bed in here, but you could easily fit a king. Yeah, yeah. we have a king. So. Yeah, I feel like. Perfect. This is awesome. You got the nice high skinny window on the back, mm -hmm. so you still get some light, but a little bit of privacy. You guys not only have an awesome house, yeah. you have a huge backyard. This is perfect. I feel like your dogs oh, are going to go hang. Yes. They're going to love yeah. it, 100%. Yeah, I love this, and I love the patio. Like, the size of it is perfect. Yeah. yeah. So we bought this house for 20,000. Our original renovation was 180,000, but when the house collapsed, we ended up spending about $210,000. So all in, we're at about $230,000, and Jared and Jordan have it under contract for 267,000, leaving us a profit of $37,000.